Hi, I'm Annabelle, and welcome to my corner of paradise. Join me as I show you how to cook great food for friends and family. It's such a beautiful still morning here at the lake. The perfect weather to try our luck for some salmon. My friend Rick is taking me fishing. It's one of my very favourite things to do. And if we're lucky, we'll be cooking fresh salmon outside over the fire. For tonight's dinner, we're starting with a platter of tea-smoked salmon served with parmesan and basil dimples. That's followed by baked lemongrass and chilli chicken served with jasmine rice and a fresh green vegetable toss. And for dessert, a stunning strawberry lemon puff. If I'm going to be out fishing all day, I need to get a few things organised for dinner. First up, some lemons from the garden to make my spectacular dessert. When I pick my lemons, I always like to leave a bit of the stem on. That way they'll keep better. I've been busy making lemon curd with all my gorgeous harvests. And everything I love about lemons is in this jar. It's so silky and smooth, and it's got that brightness of the lemon juice, and the zest gives it that lovely oily depth of flavour that makes it so delicious. I'm using my lemon curd in the filling for tonight's dessert. It's such a useful fridge fixing, something I have on hand that saves time and gives the dish that special twist. For this recipe, you need a double boiler. Now that doesn't have to be a fancy piece of equipment. I'm just using a pot with a heat-proof bowl over the top. And in the pot, I've got a little bit of water that's simmering away. I don't want that to touch the bottom of the basin because otherwise the basin gets too hot and then I'm going to end up with kind of lemony scrambled egg instead of a lovely silky creamy sauce. Into the bowl go one and a half cups of sugar, 220 grams of diced butter, the finely zested rind of a lemon, and one and a quarter cups of strained lemon juice. That's about six juicy lemons. When it's melted, whisk six large eggs together and stir them into the mixture. Make sure it doesn't boil and keep stirring it all the time. It takes about three to five minutes to lightly thicken. It's ready, look, I can run my finger through it and it leaves the line, that lets me know it's cooked. Pour the mixture through a sieve. This ensures the sauce is silky smooth and gets rid of any flecks of cooked egg white that can sometimes form. I'm going to use a jar of this later when I put together my gorgeous dessert. Makes a lovely present, but there are also some other things that you can do with it. Fold it through whipped cream and then layer into parfait glasses with crumbled meringues, sliced kiwi fruit, and a garnish of toasted coconut. And for the quickest treat, Fill sweet pastry cases with this lovely lemon curd and top with a fresh berry. Sensational. I love the smell of home-baked bread in the house. And baking your own bread is such a simple thing to do. You don't need any fancy equipment. And if you're going to make just one bread recipe, this is the one. It's just so good. So I want one and a half cups of warm water and one and a half teaspoons of yeast. Make sure the water isn't too hot or it'll kill the yeast. Let it stand a couple of minutes. Then add a cup of cooked mashed potato, quarter of a cup of oil, four and a half cups of high grade flour and two teaspoons of salt. Mix until it comes together in a loose ball. So the special thing about this dough is the potato. It keeps it really moist. And what you're looking for here is for the dough to be slightly sticky. The wetter the dough is, the more quickly it will rise and the more tender and moist it will be. Knead on a lightly floured board until smooth, about 30 strokes. Then pop it back in the bowl, cover and leave for three to four hours in a warm place or overnight in the fridge. You know it's ready when it feels so light and springy. It's risen beautifully. I love it when it's like this. And I'm dividing the dough in half and using the rest later. And what you'll find when you press it out, the gluten wants to just bring it back in again, and so sometimes you have to do this in a couple of goes. Okay, so the only other thing you need to get the best loaf in the world, it's actually a pizza stone, and it may not look pretty, but it gives you the crustiest bread imaginable. So you put this in the oven and you get it really hot, 
and then you put the bread on top of it and the bread's on baking paper so it develops a lovely crusty crust. All my bread needs now is some fresh rosemary straight from the garden. I make little dents with my fingers and sprinkle over some salt and a drizzle of olive oil. Now I'm using a wood oven, but a conventional oven preheated to 220 degrees Celsius cooks the bread perfectly as well. Hmm, smells so good. And I can tell it's ready just by tapping it because it sounds hollow. I love this dough for its versatility. I can make a sweet bread and just put half a cup of sugar into the dough and then press it out with dried apricots, brown sugar and mixed spice. It's a fantastic morning tea treat.